should be being too long here off for the uh, Hello, I'm Mark, and this is my assignment for FT100, week seven, Sonoran Desert Institute. Today is August the 30th. I'll be demonstrating the cycle of operations, disassembly, cleaning, reassembly, and the function check of a TCP Taurus 380. Safety is priority. I'm starting by ensuring there is no live ammunition in my workspace. I'm using the manufacturer's recommendations and the operator manual for the firearm. And my workspace is fairly clean. I'm clearing the firearm now. I am removing the magazine, which is clear. Locking the slide back. Inspecting in the magazine well in the chamber and looking all the way through the barrel to ensure there is no ammunition present, which there isn't. Let's begin with the cycle of operations and the role of each component. The magazine spring pushes around into position for chambering. Chambering, the slide moves forward and the round is seated in the barrel's chamber. The barrel and slide lock together, securing the round for firing. Pulling the trigger releases the hammer, which strikes the firing pin to ignite the primer. After firing, the slide and barrel unlock. Due to recoil, the slide retracts and the extractor claw removes the spent casing from the chamber. The spent casing is ejected out of the ejection port. The slide's rearward motion cocks the hammer, setting the stage for the next round. Now I will proceed to disassemble the firearm. The magazine, which has already been removed, here is your spring and feed, pre prepares the round to be chambered. I'm removing the takedown pin sliding the slide forward off the frame. The slide houses the barrel and recoil spring. Recoil springs and the guide rod or recoil. These absorb the recoil and return the slide to its forward position for its next chambering of a round. Now lift the barrel out of the slide. The barrel guides the bullet upon firing. The round is chambered. The round is pushed up the ramp into the chamber. Examining the frame, we see it holds the trigger assembly, the slide lock, and the magazine release. Now for the firing portion, you pull the trigger and the hammer falls forward, striking the firing pin, which strikes the primer. And here is your firing pin and extractor and extractor claw, which when rocked back after the firing seat or during the firing sequence, expels the spent casing. Cleaning tips and procedures. For effective cleaning, always start with a clear workspace or a clean workspace. Use a bore brush and solvent to scrub the barrel. Carbon residue or debris is removed. Then take a patch, CLP on it, send it through again. CLP on it, you'll pick up anything that the brush or the bore, the bore brush broke up or loosened. Okay, with the CLP on there, I've drawn it with this, I let it sit for a minute while I clean the outside and then I'll send another patch through that's dry and then clean the outside of the 
firearm with a patch, CLP, and all the way around into the grooves of the lug where your recoil spring and rod sit, your locking lug, your ramp. Ramp is essential if there's any carbon buildup or anything like that on there or nicks it's going to impede the round being chambered properly. So very much make sure you thoroughly clean all the way around. Looks good. Spec thoroughly through the barrel, no obstructions. And I move on to my slide. My slide, same thing, I take a patch, I wipe it down with CLP on it to loosen any debris, any corrosion. Just an initial kind of wettening of the surface, and I, but I just kind of break anything loose that might be there because I'm going to use the brush anyway. But I get a little bit of CLP on it all the way around, down in my, where I can reach with my fingers. Get it in there real well, focusing on around the firing pin and down underneath because underneath it, you tend to get gunk under there so I always push it back and use a patch underneath get anything that might be there out of there around my extractor claw make sure I inspect it to make sure it looks like it's got good a good grip good spring tension so that it will in fact pull the spent casing back out and, ex and extract properly. Also making sure that there's no debris or any crap down around the firing pin and the hole. Wipe it all down. And my barrel end, the hole where my recoil rod and springs sit. Just make sure it's real. And then after I've done that, again, I let it sit a minute. And then I go and I start working on just wiping down my takedown pin, my rod, my springs. Looking for any corrosion or weakening of the springs. And I come back using the brush, the small end usually, I'll get in those tight spots where I couldn't get with my fingers, all the way down the rail, all the way inside, anything that might be underneath it. And I just do the same thing again, scrub down the outside if I have to, if it's, there's anything excessive. And then again, I wipe it down to break, get anything that was broken loose while that CLP sat on there. And make sure it's not excessively lubricated, just enough to where any corrosion will not build up on it. And inspect everything. Make sure my sights are clear, no dirt or pocket lint down in the sight and all the way around. Okay, there's that. Now to my frame, same process. I use a patch, thoroughly wipe it down. My rails, my sides, everywhere that I can get with my fingers initially to get a light coating of the CLP break down anything that might be on there. You're gonna, I'm gonna use the brush anyway on the in, in the interior. Small spots, down in the spring. Inside the trigger, uh, magazine well, around the trigger, around your lock release, your lock. If it needs to be, get something tight it down pin and the spring are down the slides and just all the way around with your brush. Like I said, I usually use the small end on the inside. And then I'll go around and if there's any excesses, I'll 
clean the outside, anything that might be down in the grip. Before I put the slide and everything back together, I put four very small drops on my slide, I mean on my rail for my slide. Nothing more than that. There is no need for more. Less is more when it comes to CLP and lubrication. All right, so I put that there. I'll let that sit for a minute. One final look over of my slide assembly. I'll wipe it down with a rag again to deactivate or to remove any of the cleaner I had on there. If it's still a little, looks pretty good so far. And just visually inspect everything as you do it. Make sure there's nothing that's cracked, the polymer, any weakness down in any cracks little spaces where pocket lint gets stuck and all the way around okay that concludes the cleaning of the frame before I put the slide and everything back together I put four very small drops on my slide I mean on my rail for my slide Nothing more than that. There is no need for more. Less is more when it comes to CLP and lubrication. Alright, so I put that there. I'll let that sit for a minute. One final look over of my slide assembly. I'll wipe it down with a rag again to deactivate or to remove any of the cleaner I had on there. If it's still a little, looks pretty good so far. I'll begin re uh, reassembling the Taurus 3 by first inserting the barrel back into the slide. Then I'll replace the recoil spring and guide. Place the smaller spring inside the larger. And then my retaining rod or recoil rod. Now the re reco recoil rod has a, it looks kind of like a nail but with no point or rounded point. So the rounded point goes towards the end of the barrel in the knot, in the hole. You push forward and the flat end of the recoil rod will sit down in the lug. And then just make sure it's aligned properly and properly. Before you put it all back together or slide it down in the slide, I like to take my CLP and put four drops very small drops. I don't need a lot of excessive lubrication down the slides or any metal to metal contact. And then it's ready for, for it to be slid back on the, uh, the frame. Before I do that, typically I get in the habit of putting my tape down pin in because I have a heck of a time getting it to press the spring down on this one while I slide my Put my slide back on the frame. I slide it back, push back, put a little pressure on the pin until it falls into place. Wiping it all down. Then I'm done with the weapon. Slide it back and I'll leave it sit, cleared. And then I'll work on my magazine. Same thing. I'll take a cloth, I'll take it apart. Take a cloth with some CLP on it and I'll wipe the whole thing down to include the spring on the inside. Very small amount of CLPs on this patch, but I just go all the way around. So first thing, 
I have the slide lock back so the lock works. Again, it is still clear. Nothing in the magazine well, nothing in the chamber barrel. I will go ahead and slide it forward. Place my magazine in. Now, if I pull the pit, pull the trigger, you should hear the hammer fall, which it did. I'll let go. I will slide it back. It should lock because the magazine is empty, which it did. It's still empty. I will drop my magazine. It functioned properly. Lock forward again. This time, I will point in the safe direction, pull trigger, lock back, let go, and let go of my trigger, ensuring that I heard two clicks. The double action portion reset and the hammer is now gone to the cocked position and ready to fire yet again. It is now function checked properly. Inspect one more time. Put my magazine back. Put it in my holster. In conclusion, understanding the cycle of operations, each component's function, and proper maintenance, including effective cleaning techniques, is essential for the safe and effective operation of the Taurus 380. Thank you for watching my demonstration for the Sonoran Desert Institute FT100 class. Thank you. Thank you.